All right, we're going to call this meeting to order. It is 7.02. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice. Adequate notice of this special meeting as required by the Open Public Meetings Act of 1975 has been provided to Tappan to Edison and the Home News Tribune and posted in the main lobby, lo uh, lobby of the municipal complex. The reason why we are having this special meeting is so that we can discuss the New Jersey Library Construction Act. Um, as you may know, if you've been following it, uh, it was first discussed in 2017. And it's, it's a great opportunity for us to be able to make improvements um, to Edison without any implication to taxpayers. Uh, so before we get started, um, I know the mayor gave his address, and I would like to ask Councilman Joshi to just um, speak, address maybe some of the questions that may have come up after that. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, the mayor actually spoke about this meeting yesterday during his State of the Township address, and it was very exciting because this is one of the biggest projects that Edison's going to be taking on this year. The frequently asked questions that I got was, one, it's important for everyone to remember that the entire project of what we are trying to uh, propose right now, the entire project is 100% uh, zero new tax increases. There is no new taxes that will come out of this plan at all whatsoever. That's important to know. The second thing was this proposed plan is for the North Edison Public Library. This is phase one of the plan. Phase two of the plan, which is the main library, is off of Stelton. That plan is going to come later on. We can only apply for one at a time, and that's why this year uh, we're moving forward with the North Edison Li Public Library Plan. The numbers and the need fits this library specifically the most, and the ability of what we, ha wh what we can do, uh, we're, it just made more sense to go with this one. Uh, secondly, related to the need, I wanted everyone to be aware of how many patrons actually attend there's, there's a lot of question on why we have, you know, why do we even need libraries anymore? Fair question. Uh, just to give you a count, in 2019, actually in January alone, this one's in, in, in the, this particular library that we are going to expand, it, we had 11,342 patrons in the month of January alone. Throughout the entire year, in 2019, we had 154,556 patrons uh, go to and attend uh, the North Edison Public Library. It's one of the most utilized resources that we have in the township. In the month of January alone, we had 49,000 items, approximately 49,000 items borrowed. So the concept of what we're trying to do right now, and you'll see with the architect as well as when the acting director goes into it is really look forward to how the, where the future of the library stand. Previously, you know, we, none of us here believe that the future of the libraries 10 years from now is going to be a book depository, which is basically what it is right now. The future of the library is becoming a learning center, a digital learning center, a virtual reality center. Places where not just children, uh, but all ages people can go to learn different types of things. You're gonna see this in this presentation. I'm very excited to say that this, uh, this proposal, as well as what the mayor has suggested in his State of the Union, or State of the Township address, is we're gonna have one of the best state of, light, state of the art libraries, most advanced in the entire state of New Jersey. It's very exciting. Um, also, last note, just know that we have the most used library system in the entire state of New Jersey out of a municipality, excluding colleges. 
our library system in Edison Township is more used with items and patrons than the entire state. So very excited to you know, work with everyone. And I know uh, Mr. Nike is not here. He was very much a part of the you know, facilities plan, Ms., uh, Mr. Arstani, along with Pat. We, we work pretty hard on a lot of things, but I'm looking forward to this meeting and showing everyone what we had worked on. Thank you very much. Um, our first item, our agenda item, is to review the proposed building plan so that we have a, a chance to see the initial concept. And one of the things that I do want to make sure that you realize that what we are going to see is the initial concept. Uh, we want to make sure that we do have input from, um, from the public, from the staff, uh, but this is our initial concept. So. Hello, good evening everybody. Thank you for the opportunity. Sam, thanks for the opportunity to have uh, us present this design, architectural design. Uh, many thanks to Sam because he brought me to the library, gave me the feedback of how many patrons are attending at uh, the North Edison Library. And uh, he, like any good movie, when there is a good producer, then the director can do it well. So Sam said the northern side of the library has a very good poten potential. And I will start my presentation with the slides on uh, North Edison Library. Excuse me, would you do me a favor and just introduce yourself to sure, everyone? Sure, sure. Because we haven't really met before. OK. Podium? Uh, oh, sure. This, can you all hear me? Okay, great. Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, this is uh, Satyan Raval. I'm an architect uh, licensed in uh, New Jersey and New York. Currently, our firm is licensed for New York, New Jersey, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. Uh, architectural firm based in South Plainfield, named Sage Arch Architects. So, uh, Thank you again, Sam. Um, the library presentation for North Edison, I am doing on a PowerPoint. It's the first page, it's about the site study, how the library is located. So usually a person travels about five minutes in a in a quarter mile radius. And in our quarter mile radius, we have a good school, which is J.P. Stephen. Uh, and about 10 minutes for a half a mile radius where our Oak Tree Road and other facilities are. The existing drawings, I was able to get it from the archive and the site has a space, open space on the northern side. There is about 70 feet in front on the northern side. And on that 70 feet, there are contours. And the contours, meaning the land is sloping on the northern side. So if we consider a finished level of the existing library at 162.66 feet, then somewhere an average contour on that site is 155. That gives a level difference of seven feet. Solar diagram of northern New Jersey and Edison, where you can see that it's 
on the west southern side it goes to the west and there is a possibility of expansion on the north considering the setbacks right now existing on site there is 10 feet side by side setback on grow and 10 feet on the liberty place side and if we consider the northern side as front the minimum setback on that is 25 feet so if i just Let's reduce 75, like if I minus 75, 70 minus 25, you are left with 45 feet. We can easily make an expansion of 45 feet on that direction. So the next thing is you can either have a squared or a curved addition. So we are thinking to have a combination of co and a I, I just have a quick question. Sure. So in your proposed, if you go back a slide, I, I was looking at the site plan. Uh, one of the things that North Edison has a huge issue with is parking. We've always had issue with parking. We used to have meetings over there. And I remember because I had to go there like half an hour early if I was to park the parking. Uh, are we proposing in the site to add parking, because I see if you come on to the south side, then we have enough space. Our property lines are very far away. Are we adding any more parking in there? Because the way it looks like, we could double our parking space. And that would really help, because we are adding another what? So I'll come to the parking in a moment. We can add parking on the one more lane on the back, uh, if required. But there would be, um, there are heavy contours on the back side, on the southern side. So we'll have to involve site engineer to figure out how many retaining walls, what is cut and fill of the, you know, the sloping site which is there. So at some point when we go in design development, we will make that note to make sure that we have interior calculation done and the required parking is provided on site. So can you add it into that right now so we do not miss it later on? Yeah. When you, have to, when you do a revision of this for submittal, can you make sure that you add that in so we do not miss it later? It goes as a part of the package? Sure. Can I request that we let him finish his presentation and then come up with any questions we have? Because maybe he'll fill it in w in the interim. So let him finish his presentation and then no, I was ask, commenting ask. because this was sent earlier. So I understand that, but he has a whole presentation to get through. He might answer these questions. Or so he might not. And at, which, at, which, at which point you will ask those questions. Well, maybe I can ask as we go along. It's just easier. Right, let, let's continue. Let's Sorry. continue, please. Okay, I'll continue. The proposed addition which we are doing, as I was mentioning, we have 70 feet of space, and we are squaring out at 30 feet. And then the curve extends another 12 feet or something, plus minus. So I will show you how the three-dimensional and the elevation studies we have done on the concept of this addition. So if I look from the Gross Avenue side, as you see, there is a seven-foot difference on the northern side. And we can incorporate a concept of sunken sitting amphitheater, which is very uh, inviting to patrons. And, and it is very much inside-outside connection, where we have a natural ability of the ground sloping on the northern side. So on the right side, you are seeing the steps of the High Line in New York City. Uh, top right and top left. And uh, on the bottom two, there are some libraries and student activities places which they have implemented this before. So existing library, proposed first floor where the center portion would be like a sunken sitting amphitheater, which has a double height. So it will be two-story addition. First floor, second floor, 
sunken sitting, elevators and stairs to go up. The blue area indicates the second floor. And what I'm thinking is if we use the central axis, so if people are and parking, as Nawal was saying, if people are parking, they will come in from that end and they will be attracted towards the end at this amphitheater location. So we will have more of a central axis corridor, furniture layout and all that when we go into the interior design. Right now, this project, we are looking at how the box of the building can expand and how the concept will work in terms of the site. And uh, when we do go on the second phase, we will look into how the interior connections would work with the central access to that location of the amphitheater. So actually, just a quick question. The proposed double height in the front, would that have access from the top or would that have access from the bottom? So we're just having enough space from the first floor down for the amphitheater or are we gonna have, because the pictures that are there for reference, it looks like they have quite a bit of so a elevator, on the staircase. Sorry, uh, staircase and the elevator will connect. It, the elevator would be ADA compliant, accessible. No. Uh, and I'm talking about the amphitheater kind of concept that you have presented with the staircases. No, right? amphitheater is just, uh, I will show you a section in a moment. When we go on the section, it will give you an idea. The amphitheater is at only at the first floor, and you gradually go down like seven feet. So that steps which you are looking at the amphitheater is not connecting the second floor. In order to go to the second floor, one has to go take the elevator so or seven, the staircase. So it is seven feet deep, and how, how out would it be? How many steps are we looking at? So each step, I'll. The math which I have done is that taken each step, if you look at this slide uh, of the, this picture on the bottom right, right? Each step on the bottom right is the construction going on, right? Each step is six inch high, one feet tread. So there are three steps, three treads makes it ten, three feet wide platform. And then each of them is compliant by code to rise at six inch. So if I divide the seven feet into six inch. No, I'm not talking about the ADA compliant staircases. I'm, I'm talking about the sitting area. Correct. So I'm how coming to this, how, okay. how many would it be there, right? That's what your question is. So six inch is one step. If I have three step for one sitting, it's one foot six. So seven foot divided by one foot six, whatever number it comes to, we will take an even number. That many, that many sitting arrangements would be there. Okay. I have a question on this, uh, this one. So this one is on the Grove Avenue side, right? The sunken seating and the amphitheater? Yeah. So you know, like that side, um, there is a lot of traffic. So if we have this sitting, this kind of sitting there, is that inside or outdoor? I'll show you in a plan. Um, I will zoom into the plan and show you that how the accessible area is clear. The circulation is clear. Egress is clear apart from the sitting area. So sitting area is more like dormant, while the egress and clearances and wheelchair access and all that is on the two sides. So when there is a curve on the two sides, you can easily come down with wheelchair access. And then in the middle, there are steps where you can climb up. Okay. And so on two sides, I mean, I will go in the plan. Let me go over there. Okay, we was at this slide, and I was going to go. Uh, let me go to this. So if you see this existing library on the top and proposed on the bottom, the steps are right in the middle. 
So you can climb the steps up and down while you can have the seating arrangement on the left and right. In this diagram, I have not shown the ramps on the two sides in this, uh, because in this model, the ramps are missing. But there will be accessible ramps on the two sides where you can easily come down seven feet from the wheelchair access. Did I answer your question? Yeah, okay. Actually, we're gonna get only four ramps, sitting ramps, right, pretty much. The way it is right now, we get like 4.6, so we're gonna get hardly like four sitting ramps. Would it be possible to just bring it up a little bit higher to the second floor? Then it, it'll give you the depth. The picture that we're looking at that effect will we don't want to give too job. much because what will happen is if we start from the second floor, mm -hmm. the second floor I'll give you, let me see if I have a section right here. Okay. So this, if I, right now the first floor is, height is nine foot six for the ceiling height. And the second floor height is almost like 12 foot, 12 foot three inches. So if I start increasing the steps, in order to, uh, to add 12 feet to those steps, it's gonna be too much. And then everybody has to go all the way to the second floor to get that feeling. So it becomes very tough unless we get more space in the front. So we are having a constraint of the site versus... This is just a suggestion. Right now you have that open space in the front, right? How about we bring the sitting ramps right up to... Four, I, feet, four feet. Excuse me. Four uh, feet from the. Could window. we just finish with the presentation? Let's 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 have him finish with the presentation, and then oh, we you can. You don't ask want me questions. to ask any questions, Pat? No, I want you to ask questions, but I would like because now we would have seen this through as he continued with the presentation. So let's look at it first, and I want everybody to re keep in mind that this is an initial concept. This is not like the final. Plan. I'm sure we will have suggestions to give, but I think it would be helpful if we see the whole I, presentation first. Yeah, I'm sorry, I've thing, been to so I'm many really presentations. I think I rarely see a presentation that you have to have the speaker finish all the presentation before any question was asked. Usually it's much easier to ask the question on the way, along the way because then we won't forget what the question is and he would, if he, have, he has to cover it later on, he would just simply say, you know, I'm gonna cover it later on. That's just, then, then we just move on. I don't see how I, is that I'm just causing saying, I'm any just trouble. I'm saying that as the presentation continues, your question may be answered. Yeah, if that's the case, the speaker just tell us that's gonna be covered. I'll, be, I'll get there in a moment, then we just wait. I just don't want anybody to, Forget about the questions because this is yeah, I it's a preliminary frame, frame, but needs, it's much easier to, to ask notes. the question along the way. How about you take notes and ask the question? <laughs> That's pretty easy and simple. Roll no, well roll. then we have to go back to All the right, slide and me. then could flip by flip. Continue. continue. I've this been to thousands of right. presentations. Excuse this me. is the uh, excuse me. How about we ask the speaker which way do you prefer? Can you ask the excuse me? Not it's not the public comment is actually right now. Please, could we what would you prefer? Would you prefer to do the presentation and then take questions or have questions as you go along? Uh, do you, by the way, do you have a number for the slide so in case we have to go back to the slide, then, you know, how do we write down this, this thing when we don't even remember yeah, we, we, the slide we don't number? Have the material. I mean, ideally, if you can give us We don't even have a document, this advance, is all we got. It will be much better. <laughs> So, Madam President, we are here to support this whole thing, right? So, every one of yes. you is, I, I is going to so. vote to make sure that we get where we need to be for the special meeting. That's yes, the reason the just, special meeting. For, but at the same time, it's not wasting time if we have any questions, right? It's that always the devil is in details. <coughs> and and if you look at the grant application under the grant application, you cannot change it, right? No, Question number 838. No, 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 that's not true. This is just, all they need for the grant is a concept plan. And any time we apply for grants, you, know, you, you don't do the final design. It's just to get an idea of how much money it's going to cost because that's what, what you need to um, apply for the Actually, grant. I was reading that today. If you look at the question 838, it does mention that once you submit it and it gets approved, then anything that you change will have to go through. There's a whole set of forms you have to go for reapproval. Only if you would change the dollar amount. 
No, if you change the plan. Mm, I the don't dollar think amount that's will get changed with the plan. I, I, I don't think that's okay, correct. This is so my because he is familiar, the presenter is familiar with the content yes. while we are interacting. Uh, he get the feedback. Uh, it's I it's mean, fine, Madam President. If you don't want us to ask any questions, we're fine. We'll just let's go to the questions. vote so we can move forward with that. I, I don't think this is a matter fact. of not asking any questions. It's a matter of we did receive the material prior to the meeting. I printed it out. I'm looking at it while he's doing any questions I have. I'm writing down. We could have made copies of this and just use that to um, ask questions later on instead of wasting time back and forth arguing over do we ask questions, do we not ask questions. We should let him present, write your questions down, and then we can go on. We're making okay, this longer than what it has to be. Okay, let's see if that's going to save time. How do we get back to this slide? We don't have a slide number. This, uh, on your pages, this must be like almost like 12th or 14th. I don't, uh, uh. I don't have numbers on mine. Okay. So, exactly. Uh, I can. I even don't have anything printed out. Yeah. I would suggest like, that if you have a question well, about time, the steps that you just write down or note steps question. Next time, can we ask the library director to print us each yeah, member a document have, that have we should have one. something we to look? around 12 uh, not, noon today. I got, yeah. Okay, uh, right, we can uh, we can call this as a section building section. If you wanted to have a section and steps question then this is the building section question. Um, this is a 3D of existing and proposed, how the massing model is. I'm almost at the end. This is almost the second last slide. So existing on the top, proposed on the bottom. If we have more like a storefront type of a system, it can have a double height glaze to the double height atrium area, uh, the amphitheater area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we start now? Now, were there any questions? Okay, can we go back to the first slide and walk our way down? Which, uh, you want the, first slide? the slide doesn't have a number, so. This one? But actually, let's this. go back to that this step question steps. that I was talking about, so. Parking, right? Uh, the steps. steps. Parking, you said you're going to include it, right? Yeah. You're going to have an updated version on the parking, so going back to the steps. Parking, the ramp, just to let you know up. that parking can be incorporated, but it's going to be, your money would be going into site, so it's like, whether you wanted to spend, because site work with contours, there's a lot of uh, construction costs involved. But yeah, yeah right, I can show. Right now we have a huge issue with one of our libraries that even to the point that half of the board voted over here to shut it down. And the main issue with that library is parking. And that's Clara Barton. So it took okay. a long time to get it open and everything. I don't want North Edison to have the same thing where we have this beautiful library with 30 parking and then, you know, Correct, it's not correct. going anywhere with that. Sure, sure. We can accommodate it. So, so I'm uh, going back to the uh, sitting ramp arrangement. So, so right now, all we're going to have is four. Right, the pictures that I'm looking at. So we the, is if you look at this diagram, I'll go slowly on this one. Mm -hmm. So if you see what is happening is that we have 70 feet. And that 70 feet corner is the shorter corner, and the contours are between 55 and 62. So seven feet is the level difference. That's where we are showing in this diagram. Now, I wanted to show you this plan, if you see this plan carefully, the first floor plan, you will see that there are steps right in the middle for the six inch riser steps. And then there will be one foot six inch sitting arrangement which is on the left side and the right side of the steps. 
Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now what will happen is we still need to reach at the bottom of the sunken area. Right? And wheelchair access and ADA compliancy and code and egress, a lot of things which are part of this basics of this concept. So we have to leave at least three feet of ramp on either sides to make sure we are going at the end of that location. And when uh, at that location, if we, the steps are, if they are very close to the no, actually, curve. I think, I think we are, we're going. So right now, if you look at the so, two proposed two-story addition, uh, if you go to that slide. The second slide? Oh, the same slide. Mm -hmm. So in this, okay, yeah. so what I'm trying to point out over here, I don't have a pointer, but if you see where this curve is ending on two sides, right? Mm -hmm. That portion, we need to make sure we have five feet in front of it because the wheelchair will come in yeah. and it has to take a left turn to go to that location. So that corner is locked in by that much. So that's where my steps are starting. And on the back end... That's where the existing library is in the brick color. That's the place where we have to keep another five feet for all the wheelchairs to line up if there is some accessibility or egress on the top landing. So top landing needs five feet minimum. Bottom landing, after the steps, we need five feet of the passageway to go to the curved area. So now I've limited with front and back as well as the great differences, which is on site, unless we dig more or something, or unless we go for. So that is where we got this concept. This is like very preliminary concept. I got only two weeks to finish my concept. Yeah. So we can get your feedback, and during the design development, See, the whole, we can whole put idea more. Is in the 20 feet that you have open, right? The more ramp sitting space that we can put in there, right? that, that is going to be of value. If, if this after steps, doing all this, are we going to have only four or, you know, at least if, if you're going above 16, 12, 16, then it makes sense. See, what that is happening what is the, the, if you think that the f front of the existing building and the proposal where, not, where the curve starts is 30 feet. So proportionately, that steps, each length of steps on each side if you see the visual proportion, it's we are almost getting close to 25 feet length of the sitting arrangement on either side. So close exactly. to like 50 and feet then, you will have, and you will have five steps. We are not creating like a huge, like, you know, auditorium type of a thing. It's just like, just within our constraint, that's what we have brought up. You know, this is where we are. If we had... Option of increasing. No, if, if you have limitations, I understand that. But if you can get more, that would be better because the, that that is going to be the selling point of the whole library, right? Okay. You can spend so a during lot of money, but at the end of the day, that's the one that's going to carry. The got it. Goes, got right? it. Right? Because those are the pictures you're showing us, and that's what the concept that we're trying to sell. So whatever you can do, if you can get like seven, great. If you can get only five, so be it. Okay. We have a um, um, you know, few more feet to work in the front, so if I have to extend, I'll extend it. And during the design development phase, we'll get feedback for all the members who have. We'll have a live session, share it, and get brainstorming ideas and improve our design to the next level. Sue, do you have any questions? Not at this time. Thank you. Lisa? Actually, yes. Um, I didn't really see much about the second floor and the sides of the expansion. So can you explain to me, or do you have a picture of what will be happening um, on the side, the two side expansions, and the upstairs expansion? Will they be rooms? Will they be open space? Is there, I mean, I understand that you're not going to decide how they're utilized, but what will the space itself be? So uh, Sam and uh, we will see more of a how the interior concepts or the programming is going to go on the second floor. We will develop with the team and uh, virtual reality, and there is a few things which 
Sam has in mind. So we will do that programming, whatever it come. In terms of the space, as you see in blue on the second floor, as soon as you come out from the elevators, either you take an elevator, if, okay, let me see. So, as soon as you take the elevator on the back, or the stairs, you can come up to the whole blue area, which is the second floor. In that, it can be open. If it all depends on how the virtual reality you need to be, which, you know, how much space you need in terms of whether you wanted to feel the space. Sometimes there are. Uh, blank walls and you are looking at it. Sometimes there are models and there will be a presentation shortly how virtual reality works. So dim dimensions of that space and whether we make it a compartment or whether it could be an open space, that we will work it out during the design development. Okay, so um, I, no, just one more question because I didn't realize that the um, elevator and stairs would be only on the back left or right depending on how you're looking at that. Um, there's not going to be another set or even just a set of stairs on the other side, so someone's so going to have to walk all the way around. To, to I access. can mirror the elevator and stairs, which is on one side, and instead of having double elevator, I can have mirror image minutes on the other side, I can have another stair coming down. So for for ease of, but by egress um, and by, you know, we can do that easily. I yes, that's a good in point. In terms of safety, yes. if there's an emergency, I mean, I understand that we can't have that many elevators. They take a lot to maintain and yeah. they take a lot of space. But in, in an emergency, whoever is in the back left, I'll call it left for lack of a, you know, whoever's in that back left is going to have a heck of a time getting. Yes, to yes. No, I will definitely incorporate a second stairs. stair on the left side to mirror on whatever it's on this side. So one elevator, two stairs, both, one on each side. I think for now that, that covers my questions. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Nothing at this time. Fiona, yeah, thank you. David, do you have any questions? Um, I do have several questions. So I'm trying to figure out the, um, the new addition to the, how it's integrated to the existing one. Like what's the, uh, we're going to, with the new addition, we're going to add more space. I mean, what's the main, because I saw you are going to, there is a roof for the first floor in the existing building that's going to be re remain there. So if you see the blue area, yeah. right? That's on the second floor. Almost similar area, you are going to get it on the first floor as well. I go one step back right here. So if you see first floor and the second floor, okay. well, other than the amphitheater area, they both have almost the same amount of square footage which are coming on first floor and second floor. How, how many square footage? Uh, yeah. It's about 6,000 square feet on the first floor, but when you go on the second floor because of double height, you're gonna lose some square footage. Overall square footage is something like 13,600. I mean, that includes the exist, existing one, right? No, no addition only. New edition, 13, right now tentatively from our design. Thirteen thousand six hundred. Sorry, thirteen thousand six hundred. Yes. Okay. Shannon, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah. So you don't need to tear down anything existing, or do you? Just, uh... The way I'm thinking is, I'm going to use the existing openings. And any opening usually has a lintel. So basically, if you see on, this slide, the three windows which are facing the north, they are pretty tall windows. They're almost going from a two feet to almost like nine feet, you know, to the ceiling height there. So if I take out that three windows, I will have an opening to come out mm -hmm. from that side. So I'm basically trying to have minimal impact on the existing envelope and connect the existing to the new, respecting the existing wherever I can. If there is any deformity or any structural insufficiency, then during our design development, our structure engineer will look into it. 
the sitting area, um, if you could go back a few slides. Um, no. Okay, yeah, that one. Um, so it, that's covered, right? Because in this- I Yeah, the gray roof which you are looking at it is covered. basically going on the top of the second floor. So if I have to go to the section, I think I might have a section right before this. Where is my section of the steps? Okay. Right there. Okay. See, the roof is covering the double height as well as the second floor. So it's almost the roof is on the second floor, mm -hmm. above the second floor. Do you need to install anything on the roof? Because um, the only reason I ask is that I, I thought it might be nice to have like a transparent roof, like a glass roof, make it like a sunroom sort of thing. The um, thing is, we did sun studies, mm -hmm. and the initial diagram which I was showing, and when I visited the site, it was I visited the site in two different times, almost like during the time when around 10, 11 o'clock, and I also visited when the school is completed, Stevens, and you know, during that time and where the patrons were. During that time, I saw that the sun movement, it, well, I know that I did it in this season only, but the additional light was not required because of the double height, you are getting enough light mm -hmm. which we are creating. And if necessary, if you see on the second floor level, if we wanted to have some indirect light, we can have movable louvers, which can reduce the glare and penetrate the light and natural light, whatever you require. So that way, the light can be controlled. We can always add a skylight, but side skylight has, has plus and negatives. Mm -hmm. If it's not done right, there are waterproofing issues and some other things. But That's yeah, true. if design development, we'll have more of uh, studies on that. So, you know, natural light versus artificial light, how we do daylight controls and occupancy sensors and so on and so forth. So we will keep into that consideration. Thank you. Um, also, I don't know if, if, if are you going to cover the time span of this whole thing or the dollar a month span? Because this is, I'm not seeing that on this document, but maybe there's some other, other document. Uh, About? Uh, how long this whole for draft So I'm a designer, architect, professional, so I can speak about the design part, yeah. um, whoever is bidding for the job or somebody who is well-versed on that can talk about the construction yeah, aspects or the construction costs. I don't think that's a question that you could answer because this is just a, the initial concept. I don't think yeah. okay. we're at that point that we would know. Uh, Maureen, do you no, have any questions? No, not at this time. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the, for the presentation. This is certainly very exciting. Um, a lot that we have to wrap our head around. Uh, and I think there's additional information that will be given as well. Um, I believe. Do we have anything else to add? Is anybody listening? <laughs> is there something? I think we had, because uh, this, this is the concept. And then another company that we have been working with had ideas, some ideas, I believe, of the in interior. interior. So that is one. I'll just give one, keep one slide and have uh, Davis come on here and he will do the interior. So we did one interior before and after presentation for the Edison Public Library at 30, 340 Plainfield Avenue nearby Edison train station. The, so on the left is the children's play area and on the bottom left is the proposed same thing on the right is the central axis of the admin area, and the bottom right is the central axis trying to give a unique central ceiling lighting character to that. And this is where I was talking about that we will emphasize the central axis where it will connect the entrance to the amphitheater. So with that said, I will keep this slide and have a... Um, Davis to join. Thank you.
can you bring the other slide up, please? Uh, Steve. Thank you, Tamar. And then, what are And then, just just enter. Okay, good. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tamar Davis, the acting director of Orange Public Library. I mean, I'm sorry, of Edison Public Library. Um, first and foremost, uh, let me just go back. Um, the I have developed a survey back in November, December. Uh, because we were meeting with various different space planners in the library, we met with CAD Associates, and we also met with um, Creative Library Solutions, and they're developing necessary drawings and designs to help advance the library's technology at this point now. Um, in the survey, uh, as you well know, on average, we have up to about 13 to 14,000 people coming into North Edison Branch on a monthly basis. And during the afternoon, between the hours of 2.45 and 6, what have you, we have a large amount of teens frequenting our library for resources, tutorials with the parents and what have you. So we have a large group of people. So I did a survey asking the students, uh, actually I asked about 147 students about what they would like to see in terms of, li of the li in the library and that we was um, developing a multi-purpose room in, in the library. The library has a lot of great space. Um, there's a lot of people that would like to come into the library to utilize our resources. So the students answered various questions about um, um, being able to create content inside of the library, um, editing films, if you will, digital animation creation, video editing, um, then we had some adults also answering in terms of having a, te a test preparation of job mark interviews, um, so on and so forth, uh, design, uh, video design and what have you. So there's a lot of um, platforms that's needed. Um, one of the things that we came up with was a digital and virtual reality learning center, um, whereby we would have computer labs and programs with Final Cut Pro and Adobe um, virtual reality with headsets inside of the library, um, virtual uh, museums um, that shows history, geography, and digitization of information. We was also considering developing a cafe that's separate from the book area inside of the library, whereby the patrons will be able to have access to beverages while they're actually uh, having meetings and conferences and what have you. Um, and just making sure that the library can utilize this space adequately so that the patrons that are coming into the library, which is, has a large number of people coming in, they will be able to uh, positively benefit. Sorry. Sorry. So this is an example of um, students in the library that will be able to utilize some aspects of virtual reality. Um, Here's another example of students being able to be engaged in a virtual museum inside of the library, which would help enhance their understandings of history, art, biography, what have you, inside of the Edison Public Library. As uh, was mentioned earlier, we want to make sure that the Edison Public Library is top tier in, in terms of being able to make sure that the students have the right and necessary resources, especially in that we have a great high attitude in terms of our students being able to um, go to some advanced schools, Ivy League schools and what have you. So that will run neck and neck of what the students are actually receiving inside of the academic institutions and high schools in the area. Here's another example of some virtual reality, some furniture in the place. This is wishful thinking. Nothing is etched in stone at this point now. I'm just pretty much brainstorming and when I want to share the 
with the board and the public some of my ideas in terms of making sure that the library can be a uh, number one technology center throughout the state of New Jersey. Um, excuse me. We also was considering multiple screens, which would be touch screens where people can actually learn some touch screens. Some libraries have touch screens that are flat like tables where students uh, as young as uh, toddlers can actually learn computers through touch screen or what have you. So we want to make sure that our students have access to great information, not just great traditional books or what have you and great programs, but we have great technology that can advance them in, in, the, in the global world. Here's an example of uh, students learning about anatomy and physiology from a program that's part of the, uh, uh, some uh, computer uh, programming thing. Here's an example of a cafe, library cafe. It's a nice looking cafe, great furniture. But this is, this is very attractive. And I think that the patrons are dying to have this in their library so that um, they can have a place to study relax, brainstorm, think, and what have you. Here's another example of a cafe inside a library. Um, I think that uh, the library, if you go to your, your local Barnes and Nobles or any of these uh, type of bookstores, you will see that a cafe runs neck and neck with the people being able to go in and read books and materials before purchase. Uh, and what have you. And then it gives people a chance to brainstorm, socialize, um, create new ideas, and so on and so forth. And I, and I think that that goes beyond the tradition of, of, of a library of just books and programs. We want to be able to help enhance the community and the globe by having people socialize and come up with the great, great results. Here's some examples. We have some gray space inside the library in terms of meeting rooms. But I think they, um, we've met with the Creative Library Solutions. They're coming up with some drawings and designs for the library. Cade Associates came up with some drawings and designs to make sure that we can enhance the library, beautify the edifice of the library, have great furniture that's welcoming to our patrons at large. Um, and we have, I'm proud to say that we have over 100,000 people in our community that's really, that's really gun-ho about the library and they like where the library is going. So I think that it's only fair to give them a little bit extra to make sure that we can become the number one library, not only in Edison Township, but also in the state of New Jersey. Here's some more additional pictures. So these are just ideas, it's not nothing etched in stone. We can share and work together to come up with some creative concepts and brainstorm to make sure that we can further the library collectively. Anybody have any questions at this point? Neville, any questions? And we're going to pay for all this for the, from the grant, including the construction? Not necessarily. Um, what happens is, uh, in terms of beautifying the furniture and what have you in the library, unless if, if it's a part of the construction project, say for example, if they're doing a space or a room and there's some construction being done, then if there's a rug that's needed, then you can perhaps purchase that. But this is something that I wanted to come up with to let the board give a, to help assist in developing the overall plan for the North Edison Branch Library. It's, it's ideas, um, so and no um, who's going to pay for this, or how are we going to pay for this? That I think that if the board, if I think that if once the plan is properly presented, this is these are the sketches. I would bring it before the board and ask the board to vote on developing a, a certain amount of appropriation to actually move forward with this project. So all I can do is present and give suggestions. It's up to the board to actually pass a vote to move forward with making sure that you earmark the proper appropriations for finishing up this project. So what's your budget on this? What's your There's no budget as of yet. At, so. There's no complete budget as of yet. We're waiting for the Creative Library Solutions to come up with ideas so that once I have the drawings and everything is in place, 
then I can present it before the vote so with, with the proper numbers. Right understanding that what you're presenting right now has nothing to do, or we cannot pretty much use any. Part well, it does of the have plan. something to do. It does have something this to do. This would be on and above the grant money. No, no. It does have something to do with the factor that we actually are reconstructing the edifice in the library, and we was hoping to reconstruct it in lieu of developing a technology center for the library. So if we look at, if we read the New Jersey Construction uh, Grant Act, I mean, we would understand that they also fund technology as well. So we can actually put that as part of our package in terms of doing the construction. Because they fund technology as well. But Neville, I think I agree uh, with what you're saying. You're saying that the pictures that we're seeing are not pictures of the North Edison branch. They are just ideas. Yes. No, well, what I'm saying is, you know, it's great. Don't get me wrong. We want the grant. We're going to go for the grant, but spend what we have. We, 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 are, but, but, we are aiming for too much, and no, no. we're not going to be able to deliver, I would say, one-fourth of this. But what happens is... for virtual reality, the but, museum that you showed, that content, would but cost if, you more than a million dollars. But what I'm, I'm getting ready to make a point. The point that I'm trying to say is that we have an opportunity with this particular grant or with this bond to actually include technology as, as advanced in the library. We have an opportunity to do that. So I think in addition to doing the construction for the library, we also need to consider the need for technology for our, for our patients. I guess I'll leave it to yours and Madam President's better judgment. You guys have done more work. All I know is what I saw today, but if you can accomplish this, great. I'm yes, sir. All for it. I just want to add it because I did read it and I've spoken to everyone, about 15 to 20% of the total spend that we have can come from the grant that, we, that can be used towards the furniture and technology. So 15 to 20% of our total money between, uh, that leaves us a, a room, that puts us up to 300,000 that can be applied towards this. And these, like I said, and like everyone said, these are just concepts. So we can, the public has input on which ones they feel are vital and not. Thank you. Sue, any questions? No, not at this time. Lisa? Not at this time. Fiona? Not at this time. David? I have some questions regarding the cafe there. Um, you mentioned the comparison between um, Barnes & Noble and the library. I mean, Barnes & Noble is a private company, right? It's, it's private, and they have their own cafe, which can you mm -hmm. know, go together. How do you think uh, this one in the public library is a tax is it, dollar you know, it's support? It's interesting that you say that, because what happens is when we look at capitalism as a whole or business structures as a whole, usually nonprofit organizations, uh, government organizations pretty much follow suit. So if we want to be number one, we have to compete with every entity that exists, whether it's a corporation or what have you. And people are going to Barnes and Nobles because they feel comfortable inside of Barnes and Nobles is welcoming. We have to make sure that our library is welcoming to our patrons where they feel comfortable because this is the competition right here. Libraries are relevant and libraries should exist. So they, they're creating a, an environment where people can come feel comfortable. They can get a, 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 some, some coffee or what have you, and at the same time read a book. And they want to do the same thing at the, at the library. They want to be able to do the same thing. So why not be able to give no, the I'm, I'm not objecting to the campaign. Okay, great. What I'm trying to figure out is that this is going to be a new item, right? The li current library, we don't have cafe. And how is it going to work? I mean, how do you plan to get it to work? Because uh, we don't the library is a publicly supported entity. We if there is any, like, say, loss from the cafe, and are we going to use a tax store? What, what, no, no. What happens is that? right now we have in our library uh, classy vending, for example. Okay. Patrons come into the library, the high school students that come in in the afternoon with classy vending. They spend their money inside of our library to buy sodas, uh, uh, snacks, or what have you, as soon as they come home from school. On average, from both libraries, we usually get like between both libraries, maybe $450 between both libraries, about maybe $900 a month between the main library and the branches. Um, and the students are coming in, they're coming in from school, they're coming in hungry, they're tired, they have to study, they're waiting for their parents to come. 
I think it's, I think it's okay, in my opinion, to be able to give them a little extra. Because, and even if, it's, if there's a cost analysis with it, whereby they may have to spend 50 cents, they may have to spend this, they may have to spend, they're already spending money with classy bending at this point now. So why not move forward and give them the best? Because, I mean, you know, I think we all agree we want to give yeah. them the best, but I, yes, I think yes, David's question is, you know, right now we are sending stuff through vending machines, right? We don't have, that's unperishable s s stuff. Right, right now the students you said they buy stuff that's that's from vending machine or where do they get the stuff? The the, the vending chips, machines or? are in the library. If you go into North Edison Branch and you go to your left near the copy machine, the vending machines are, are right there. The vending machines, the soda machine, and also the snack 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 machine is right there. If you go to the main library, as if you're going towards the uh, administration office, when you look to your left, there are vending machines right there. Yeah, yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. This this is through vending machines, but if you have a real cafe, then you would have real coffee machines, I don't know, donuts or something, that's not unperishable food. Uh, well, let, let, me just, let me ask, because I think, to, to clarify, it, will this be a vending machine-based cafe space? Will this it be, can be, yes. I mean, is, is there a, is, before we worry about employing the people and getting fresh food, are we looking to have fresh food? Are we looking to have like a Dunkin' Donuts Those, type space? So let's right. like let, not get in the weeds right. on yeah, this. Yeah. That's before why we're we, asking. You know, yeah. No, it's a good. It's a good point. I my concept of it is that we the spaces that we currently have our vending machines are very limited. We would have wherever we would have this food, um, we would have flooring that would not be destroyed, such as carpeting. We would have easy to clean flooring. We would have maybe high tables and stools that students could sit at, and. I, I would think that we would start out with vending machines, but I don't think we need to get into that detail right now. Yeah, I'm not asking Dunkin' Donuts to come in. No, no, no I don't think no. that that's what we're no. looking for. Yeah. Um, Maybe that's not a bad idea, actually. You should outsource it, right? We still yeah. get our rent, yeah. and well, somebody else will right. still be able to provide it. Mm. At least that's not the um, taxpayer's first. money. <laughs> Maureen, do you have any questions? No. Oh, I have some questions. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought that you already spoke. Oh. Shannon. Yeah, multiple questions. So, um, this um, approved, there's like approved grant application, then you mentioned something about bond. So are we applying just for a grant? Or no, no, I'm sorry, I, I used the wrong word. It's a bond, it's not a grant. It's a bond. It's a New Jersey construction bond. No, Act. it's a grant. It's a grant, okay. Yeah. It's just a title. Yeah, it is a grant, but okay. it is the title it is the New Jersey Library Construction Bond Act. Um, but it is a grant, and that's the reason why we're meeting tonight, so that we can approve a resolution to move forward with this grant. Um, yeah, I, I'm happy that we're applying stuff for something. If we can get something from the state, who are from whoever, for Edison residents, that would be great. I just want to know, you know, how much how much money is this grant? Because I, I didn't really see anything on this document numbers, anything, or how much are we applying for? So let's be applying for, was it 1.3, 1. 1. right? Is it, am I reading? Yeah, it's. 1.3. It's, 1. 3 no, 1.506 1. Okay. was the amount. And yeah, it's confusing, and a lot of people are confused by it because it's called a, the New Jersey Construction Bond Act, but it's not a bond, it's actually a grant. So the state matches one for one dollar for dollar for what we authorize tonight. That's so, to know. so we're applying for this grant. The taxpayer doesn't have to. Zero. This no, whole thing, right? like I said, no, is going to no. be zero no, cost. Okay. Well, I and how, what are the chances that we get it approved? Do you know how many cities are applying um, other than us? No. There's a lot of people applying. It is competitive. It's very they have competitive. not really offered a, um, this grant for a number of years. So it is competitive. And, and far as what I understand, that's why it was very important to have a real construction project. Um, I think the plan that the gentleman came up with is, is considered a real construction project, mm -hmm. whereby your chances are greater if you are engaged in a real construction project. Um, and, and that's, you know, that you have to do a real construction project, so. Okay, yeah, I, I agree. But 
we need to get some numbers, at, like rough estimate for that project that we're doing this. We'll make sure you, we'll, I'll make sure I furnish the necessary numbers and the rough estimate for the project, and I'll email it to the board members as soon as, as, soon as possible. As soon as I have it, I'll make sure you get it. Yeah, Mr. Joshi said that we, this grant, if approved, if we got it, is going to cover, did you say like 20, 30 percent? 20, 30 percent of technology. It, it can help cover 20 to 30, 20 percent of technology. It, with the construction aspect, the 20 percent, is it can be used for technology. 20 percent um, of the? Yeah, of the grant, of, of what's approved. So if you have part of your package, the construction, and then part of the construction package, if you have need, a, a techn technological need, you can include 20 percent towards tech, technology upgrades in your library as part of the grant. So to get this magic number, who did we use? Yep. We, we got the estimates based off of uh, the square footage. So it was, the total plan was 13,600 square feet. We used, I think it was $221, or two, between $221 to $225 uh, per square feet. And then we multiplied that number, uh, divided by two, that's the 1.5 that we would be matching and the 1.5 that we're applying for. And the technology component of it, like he said, is 20% of that, which happens to be slightly less than 300,000. So, so to apply, we either need project architect, engineer, or what they define as a company that would be an estimator, license estimator. So when are we gonna get those? Without those, you'll not be able to apply. No, we don't need these. I've spoken to the grant writers, and I've spoken to, well. You, 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 you need. I'm going by their requirements based on the website mm -hmm. and the Q&A answers, so, but they might be wrong, you know better. Let but, but they want estimates in terms of numbers, in terms of finances, measurements, so on and so forth. The, it gets down to the nuts and bolts when you actually put the, put the once, it, once the project is approved, once, then they have to put it out to bid. And once it goes out to bid, then that's when it becomes a bit more intense. Maybe, maybe I'm not clear. When you apply for the loan, for the grant, grant, right? When you apply for it, according to them, you need to give them an estimate. And that estimate has to come from either a project architect, an engineer, or what they define as a company, mm -hmm. which is a license estimator, right? Are we gonna get that when we apply for this? Yes, yes, we will have Yes, that. we have it. Okay, and as soon as you get that, you'll be able to give it to the board so we can take a second look at it. Yes, sir. Yeah, and for the authorization, we just needed one estimated number. Uh, but the person, the grant writers that we're working with uh, was our Township's Millennium, Millennium Strategies, and uh, they're, they're also working on this grant with other townships as well. And all the townships that are applying for this are taking the same process that we're taking. So. And another good question that was asked was if, let's just say we apply for the 1.506, so it's a total $3 million project. Out of the 1.5, let's just say the state only gives us a million. We are allowed to revise these plans, they're not set in stone. The sec one more question I had for Mr. Timur was, uh, have you taken far-sighted look into how much more uh, you know, how much more uh, employment we're generating with this? You know, do we have the budget for it? You know, all those good stuff that goes with it? Let me get back to you on that. Okay, sounds good. Uh, yes, sir. So can you present to us in the next board meeting in March? Yes, sir. So just to double check, this 3C approved matching funds for the grant, that's not fund. That's the front fund from the state. We're not, it's not coming from Edison taxpayers. No, no, this, this is coming from the state. No. Okay. okay, 3D, approve payments for the architect. Uh, uh, what are the numbers that we're approving, uh, the payment for the architect? I think we're going to hold that until the March, the March meeting. meeting. Oh, so we're not, D. we're striking it out? Yes, we're agenda? not doing that tonight. Okay. That wasn't advertised. Yeah, because if we are approving something, I think we need to see the numbers that we're approving, and it's not here. Yeah, yes, just we're focused on the construction bond yeah. Um, act the grant um, that we can now we have reviewed the proposed building plans we do want to approve going forward to putting in an application uh, and we are applying in for what they call as the fall winter 
session, the very Correct. first one, March 26th end, right? Mm -hmm. From that 87.5 million that they're offering in that session. Yes, I believe the first time um, applications can be submitted is March 9th. Yeah, and I think April 26th is the last date. Last yeah, date. So if, yeah. before yeah. that, we'll have the whole application package ready for review. Yes. Right? Yes, So sir. we can approve everything today with contingency that we get the package before it gets applied. Yes, sir. And this is this money is only going to be used for North Edison. We're not doing anything for South Edison Library or Claire Barden. And think that is only because I think we did mention earlier mm. that this is phase one. This is phase one, and the reason why um, the focus is on North Edison is because that seemed to be the um, location that needed the most space. They have the most space, and it's the most utilization, which will score us a lot higher. Um, for the, especially the first round. I have a question on the C. Approve matching funds for the grant. That means is that when we apply for the grant, we need to provide the matching funds. No, you just have to have authorization for it. You're, you're, just, you're just stating that you're going to, at some point, have the matching funds for it. Yeah, so <laughs> at some point means that when the grant is approved by the state, we needed to have that money for the, you say have if it. we get like 1.5 million, then Edison needed to budget for you, another 1.5 million. You have right? that. You, yeah. you more than have 1.5 million. No, that's, that's what I'm, uh, what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying like whether we have it or not. I'm trying to see what this, this matching a fund suggestion? and Sorry. the formula. Yes, uh, yeah. No, just a suggestion, at least can we put in some money, I don't know how much it's going to be, I know we still have some space left, but can we put in some money so the other libraries at least get a coat of paint and a new carpet? Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I know we are stepchildren in the South, but get us something. So I'll, I'll just elaborate more because this is the most common question that I got after the State of the Township yesterday. This plan is only for the purpose of the grant application. The $2 million that we currently have already saved up we're not exhausting all of that. We're, all, we're using about half of that towards this project. The other half is phase two, which we're, we can use towards the other libraries. And keep in mind that we're gonna get slightly less than half a million dollars uh, from, from the new tax rate of the base that we got, but it's, it's the minimum funding that the state requires it's the township over, to get. It's over no, it's, half it's, a it's over half a million. So we're gonna have an additional over half a million dollars in our account by the end of the year. So we're gonna have $2.5 million. Yeah, and we have, believe me, with the facilities committee, we have started, um, you know, with the two different companies that we've met with, uh, actually we were starting with Main Library with some of the changes that could be made, some of the updates that could be made. So no, we are not only doing work in North Edison, it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be throughout the community. And we just have to hurry with this because of the time limit. <laughs> yes, that's the focus. That's why we're the grant meeting this special meeting yes. tonight so that we can so that we can do that. Um, moving on to uh -oh. the can I have one oh more sorry questions? yeah um, so what are the total um, dollar amount for the grant for the entire state? It's 125 million, and we're asking for 1.5, which is a very reasonable amount. Okay, so it's a good chance we. And it goes, we're allowed to ask for 12 million, uh, but it goes down to the space and usage. So we're being very realistic and very practical. There's not, you know, it's, we're, we're, on, we're on the higher side out of the 125 million. We're asking for the 1.5, we're the fifth largest municipality in the North Edison Library. This particular branch nails all the requirements that uh, go into like the, the point scale of, the, of how they, select how much money we get. Yeah, and I think it is helpful that you're working with um, Millennial to prepare the grant, you know, and they are working with other, with other communities. But I do have, I do have the, uh, a resolution to approve the grant uh, application, oh. and I can Read that. Did you have something? Yeah, there was just two more parts oh, to this. Sorry, sorry. Uh, there was all, there's actually a YouTube video. So one, well, I'll just go over this too. When we speak of, wait, go back to this. Mm -hmm. No, I got it. No. 
Yep. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Okay. So when we speak of virtual reality versus augmented reality and digital reality, all three completely separate things. Uh, in case the public doesn't know, this is uh, this is actually virtual. So the concept is if one. <coughs> If we have any section, and we can, you know, the public can decide where we do this. Oh. Okay. The public can decide where it goes within the, the plans itself. But it, it, we only need about 10 <coughs> by 15 square feet for this. And it's just a headset. The headset itself, uh, Oculus, goes between 10 to 15,000 per set. And this is an example of what you can do. The software, if you look on the left side, you can walk through museums, and on the right side of this, you can actually see the descriptions. So you can walk through an entire Smithsonian Museum. The way that Intel has it right now, you can walk through any of the Smithsonian Museums right through Edison Library, just like that. And I'm going to show you an example of uh, Google Earth. So you'll be able to, with this, this we can get through uh, Oculus. It's less than 15,000 as well, just for this unit. Someone would be able to walk in, or someone would be able to use this headset and say they want to go to Italy, Korea, Japan. They can actually zoom in on their headset and they can go into the country, learn, they can walk through an entire country or, you know, and walk through everything just through this. And I wanted to show you an example of that, but before, I just want to make sure the sound doesn't. Uh, go off. Okay. I think we need to adjust, right? Mm -hmm. This one? Yeah, hold on. I gotta fix this. Wait, it's gotta load. One sec. You know, just pause it real quick and then I'll hit it together. So this was one example, like I said, if, oh, okay. Actually, leave it, we'll, we'll go with the second one. Since nearly the beginning of human history, maps have shaped the world we live in and marked important milestones in our advance. We'll go to the second one.
Test. Is this on? Yes, it works. So the two examples that we just saw is what I want people to be aware of with virtual reality. Like I said, any student or anyone, if you've never been to Alaska and you want to go to Alaska, you can wear the headset, you can go down through Google Earth, you can actually walk through the streets in Alaska and you'll be there. Uh, the other part was an example of, let's just say you're an aspiring artist and you want to make a design. This is where the future of learning centers are going. You'll be able to use a virtual reality paintbrush and you can design anything. You can save it on your laptop and your USB and you can take it home and you can continue. That's also the same thing that uh, Timur was saying earlier, which if you want it, you know, it, it's important for our students, especially moving into the future, to be able to use uh, things such as Final Cut Pro. People can't, people can't afford, the average person can't afford Final Cut Pro right now, but it is subsidized for government entities. And it's important for you know, people to have the ability to be able to use this. So where we put this, it's completely up to the public and the trustees, but I just want to throw out the concepts. Thanks. Thank you very much. I, I, I realized that this was put together you know, it took a lot of time to put this all together, and, and I appreciate it. Uh, and I just want everybody to realize that um, one of the reasons that we're meeting tonight is because in the Construction Bond Act, the whole application, there are two required resolutions. And the reason that we're meeting tonight is not only to go over the plan, but to approve these two resolutions. First resolution is um, the resolution to apply, and I, I will read it. Uh, it's the Township of Edison and Edison Public Library Board of Trustees hereby certifies that permission has been granted to apply for the project grant entitled the New Jersey Library Construction Bond Act for the purposes described in the application in the amount of 3060000 the filing of this application was authorized at the official meeting of the government governing body of the Edison Public Library held on February 26, 2020. Um, that is the one uh, resolution to apply. I would like to make a motion that we approve this resolution. To apply. I'll second that motion. This is that we're going to approve this with one contingency that we get the final package before it gets applied for, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, and yes, I, I would agree. Yes. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. So that resolution has passed. The resolution to apply. The second resolution is the certification of matching funds. Whereas the Township of Edison and the Edison Public Library hereby certify that permission has been granted to apply for the project entitled the New Jersey Library Construction Bond Act in the amount of $3,060,000. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Edison Public Library hereby certifies to provide the 50% match for this project to any awarded grant funding through the New Jersey Library Construction Bond Grant Program through its trust not to exceed $1,530,000. As such, the government governing body of the Edison Public Library certifies that we will provide the required, required match funds. The match required for this application was authorized at the official meeting of the governing body of the Edison Township Public Library held today on uh, February 26, 2020. I'd like to make a motion that we... Uh, can I ask a quick, quick question? Um, on this resolution, do we need to put a date or like when the magic fund will be available? No, this is the resolution as taken from the application packet. That's exactly what they want. 
That's the resolution that they want in our application. Okay, so I mean, just in case that like, you know, we apply in April or in May, they give us the fund. Do we have the enough matching like in June? Yes. Yes, yes, we do. Um, but it wouldn't have to be, we would not be paying yeah, that amount so quickly. Okay, I'm just asking this kind of a of course. When, yeah, yeah. Of when the course. legislation approves it in June, and if we are awarded, then we have to send them the proof of funds. And it could be as something as a bank statement. Right, right. So we're going to use our treasury fund that we have. And we're I, I, believe, I believe there's a motion on the floor. We do need a second. I second. All right. And now we can have some discussion. And we are approving this that we're going to get the estimated costs that yes. are required by and yes. before we send it in. Okay. Yes, yes. Any other comments? I, okay. I would just appreciate if we can see the resolution before the meeting, because um, I'm don't sorry. See it. What, what the resolution mean? that you are reading. If we can all get a copy of the resolution, it would be much easier for us to read it through instead of hearing it for the first time now. Okay. It, it is in the application packet. I don't know whether you had a chance to um, to read it, but but it is in the application <laughs> packet. But we can make sure. You know what? We can. Um, I'll make sure to email the resolution to everyone so everybody has a copy of it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, all those in favor of passing the resolution, the certification of matching funds for the Edison Public Library? Aye. 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 Any, ups uh, any, uh, I can't even think of the word now. <laughs> any objections? All those opposed? Any opposed? All right, so this resolution has passed. Thank you very much. It, it, this, is, this is very, very exciting. Um, and hopefully we will receive this grant. Now, I think it's time for public comment. We're so. going to skip the item D. Yes, I think I mentioned that before. Uh, item D on the agenda was to approve the, um, uh, the payment for the architect. And I had thought that that was really part of the whole discussion tonight for the construction bond. But actually, we need to table that and wait until uh, our general March meeting, our regularly scheduled March meeting, uh, to address that. Do, do we have a number? Sh shouldn't we already have a number before the yes, architect Yes, I believe starts? we received that number today in the email that um, Timor had sent out. It was, if you looked at the initial payment for step one is $2,500. So that's what we'll be discussing in March. So at this time, um, I'd like to open it up for public comment. I want to go last. Okay. I'll let them go first. Esther Nemitz, 162B Faye Street. I just have a question. Uh, uh, will copies of these presentation uh, pictures that were up on the screen, will they be available, especially the layout and the concept and uh, uh, some of the items here? Uh, will that be available to the, uh, the public in some way? I'd like to have that's a, a... That's a very good question. Because it's very hard to see on the screen. Yes, and if I go yes. home and look at my TV when it comes on tomorrow night, it's not going to be any easier. But these screens don't show up on the TV well right. at all. Right. No, I'm sure that we can make something available that we can make we, the... Um, we'll make sure that the presentations are available on the library's on website. The library website. On the website. Okay, but I don't have a computer. I need I make, a physical copy. And I make sure there's additional copies inside the library, Clara Barton Branch, North Bedersen Branch, and the main library as Okay, well. that, that would be uh, helpful because I'd really like to uh, try to make sure that I understand what it is that is being discussed here. And uh, without having something to really look at, uh, it, I think it would be a little difficult uh, just looking at the screen. Uh, and it certainly has been a very interesting uh, evening. Uh, and I think what you are doing uh, is very uh, uh, important and meritorious and forward-looking. 
Uh, so uh, I will be uh, interested in following the progress that you make as you move forward with this. Um, so thank you again for uh, being willing to apply, uh, given that uh, the grant uh, has been uh, has a short period that it allows people to uh, you know really make this application. Uh, I think it's uh, been a very a very good idea, as uh, Timur Davis has ex expressed that he would like Edison to be one of the better people uh, in uh, some of the more forward aspects of library usage. Uh, so I think that's a, a good goal. It's, it's a meritorious goal. Uh, and I think that there are a lot of students, especially, uh, that would look forward to that. So um, I'll be interested in hearing more input uh, from the students also uh, and from the people that are uh, going to have the opportunity to have input with this plan, I assume, as it goes along. Uh, is there a deadline on when you have to be finished with the plan? Well, the, the proposed, pl the, the initial, the concept has to be ready to be put, to be submitted with the application uh, starting on March 9th. But that does not need to be the complete, you know, in stone plan. So we can continue to ask for input from the public. All right, but is there a deadline on the in stone plan? I well, they're they're um, taking applications. They're taking applications from March March 9th to April 6th, and then I don't recall. I'm sure it's in here when they are actually going to award the first stage uh, the first stage of this um, grant but I would imagine that we would June. have some time is Madam it June? Said, yeah. do you remember I don't Madam remember. President, I it's in it's June in here. so April 26 is the last date for everybody to apply we'll all apply by then uh, for the first round that is 87.5 million and then by June they will have the list uh, over to the legislative committee. Well, how final does it have to be by June? I mean, can you still make changes if you want to, if you're really not, you within, know? Within 10%, yes, we can. And then once we are awarded, we can make changes. If it's more than 10%, there's a whole lot of paperwork we have to go through and approvals. And there's a there's, there's way to make changes after the fact, too, but it's going to be difficult. All right. I think one of the things that will be important is that you keep everybody abreast of it, just what all these deadlines are and how you are meeting them, okay? Because that's going to matter a lot, uh, that, that it's clear that the effort is being put in step by step to meet those deadlines and what the ingredients are that have gone into meeting each one of those deadlines and what kinds of decisions you have specifically made. There have certainly been some uh, uh, interesting ideas presented uh, and uh, as you decide which ones you want to keep and to what extent or whether you want to make some uh, little changes, I think everybody's going to want to know that and it's going to be important that you keep a, a deadline and a timeline to put all that out and that you report back. And if you need extra meetings to do it, you know, set extra meeting time as you did tonight to do a special meeting and devote it to uh, keeping everybody abreast. I think this was a very uh, good way to handle this meeting, especially for this purpose. Um, but you might want to do that again. Uh, yes, so. you're right, you're right. Okay. Uh, and just to give you a realistic you. timeline, Esther, uh, funds could be available anywhere from July to October of 2020. And once the funds are available, then you know you have one year to finish the a construction project or you have to apply for extensions so although it's very fast moving but in realistically you'll not see anything for the next at least year and a half to year so and year and a half year and a half to two years you'll see the progress to two years yes all right well nonetheless uh as you go forward uh step by step by step you should be having uh, very definite uh, presentations about just exactly what's being considered, what's not being considered, what you've eliminated, what you've included. You know, all of those things need to be, this is a, a really a, a great way to start the discussion. Yes, uh, yes. And uh, obviously that discussion should continue uh, in, in a way that the public is really uh, kept abreast of how these uh, things are being considered.
consider because it'll give people a chance to come forward if they have ideas that they want to contribute uh, and come to the to the meetings and at public portions uh, agree or disagree or uh, come up with other suggestions uh, that they may may want to see. Yes, um, we certainly want the. the we certainly one want of the, the things that I I'm still having this. a little difficulty with is understanding the physical space. Uh, and that's why I need to take a look at the at the physical copies of this is to understand the physical space and just what can be done with it. So until I'm totally comfortable with that, I'm going to have some questions. But thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Anyone else? Hi, uh, Jerry Shi, Nine Finch Court. Um, it's very exciting to see these uh, diagrams. Uh, you know, uh, I know where Sam lives, and I don't live there very far from where he lives. So my kids go to the library all the time for the year they were in the school. So um, <clears throat> very exciting to see the uh, the, the plan being the you know in, in the in the works. So just a couple of suggestions that uh, uh, we have a lot of flat roof. Um, see if we can look into put solar panels or something like that um, during the construction. So we'll uh, be more um, environmental friendly. Uh, the other thing that you both mentioned is that uh, the North Edison Library has been used a lot by the um, JP kids. So my concern is I don't know if you have the answer. Um, what kind of uh, interruption is going to be when the construction is, is going on? A lot of kids go there after school. So I don't know if you have any answers. Um, the other thing is um, for a lot of these um, public constructions, you, own, you need another 5 to 10%. Um, I forgot the word. Overage just in case for change orders and stuff. So these 3 million that was estimated, does that include that the extra 5 to 10% or, or it's, it's, a, it's additional? So for... I know exactly what you're saying. For the purpose of the application, yeah. we had to show what the amount we're mm -hmm. asking of. Mm -hmm. We have, by the end of the year, we're going to have 2.5 million already in our account. So we're going to have more than a million of room. Okay. Obviously, we don't want to use it all towards this. We want to use it towards the other libraries as well, though. So the 1.5 that we're applying for matched with the 1.5. Uh, we did have room. Uh, there's also square footage space that we've uh, allocated. So let's just say out of the 1.5, which is a very reasonable amount that we're asking for, we get slightly less. We can actually cut out part, like there's, there's certain areas of that floor plan itself we can eliminate. So we don't need the 13,000. We could just have 12,000, even 10,000 without it you know, interrupting the plan itself. Yeah, so your 221 or 225, I think that's the per square footage you're estimating, right? Yeah, between, I can't remember if it was 221 or 225. Yeah, some 220 yeah. something, right? Yeah, correct. so it, it's it's pretty low. So I hope that, uh, you know, the estimation is, is correct. And um, the other thing is that, that, you know, yeah, it's very exciting for the north side, but Let's also present a plan for the south side as well. So the, <laughs> you know, I, I know you you are you you are in a rush. You want to get it over with, but you know, let's also the the, the folks on the south side to see, you know, what's what's in the plan for them, right? This is going to be the, the next, you know, uh, two three years. They're going to see that, but let's give the um, forward uh, looking for the south side as well. So that's 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 my comment. Thank you. All right. Crystal, Middlesex County. I saw one of the uh, past videos, and um, the library board broke the Open Public Meetings Act, and they fired an employee without a rice notice. Do we have a lawyer here today? Or, no, or not did today. We, not we, at this special meeting. Okay. Well, I thank David Yee that we have this special meeting, because if he, am I correct that if David Yee didn't walk out, the public wouldn't have known about this? No, that is not correct. Well, we have, we're having an emergency meeting because David E. walked out of the closed session that you guys were going dis to discuss this during the closed session. Uh, let me try to clarify that one. 
Because you said that at the town hall, David E. Yeah. Yeah, town council. Yes. All right. Um, I, Sam Joshi, you're racist against the south side. On your uh, Facebook page, you said the north will rise again. Of course, it's a Game of Thrones thing. I like Gaia Stark. She had a hit list. But you have something against South Edison, Joshi, and we're all noticing this. I don't like that. There's nothing for South Edison. Uh, I, I, excuse me. Public comments, yes. I'm, I'm allowed to say anything. Yes, yes. No. A Supreme Court You're ruling. You're allowed to, yes, but please, if you could. <laughs> I didn't, say, I didn't say nothing bad. Um, president to Neville Aristani. Uh, Neville Aristani, they said it cost 10 to 15,000 for the virtual reality. We have that on our phones for free, but at the same time, in five to 10 years, it's gonna be a few hundred dollars. Just like a game system, you buy the game system, it's, at first it's 500, 600, it becomes 100. It go, everything goes down in a few years. You think, you think it's smart to spend 10, 15,000 on, to, uh, I don't think it's smarter. I mean, it, it will go down. You agree with me, Neville? Neville agrees with me. Thank you for coming to work, Sam, because it was, they said you never come to work. Why does everyone want to uh, fire David Yee, but he shows up to work more than Sam Joshi at the library board level? Uh, I checked the, the meeting minutes for last year. For whole year 2019, I attended the meeting 100%. And I think I checked that uh, Councilman Joshi's attendance, he's absent, absent 40%. That's and a very poor performance. <laughs> fire me. Very I, poor. I don't really see the purpose well, of these public comments. Public comments, Supreme Court ruled, I can, I can, and it is library related. So I want to shout out to Esther. Thank you for coming. I like Esther. MC Tony D. What's up, MC Tony D? You did a good thing the workshop you did at the thing. Um, Shannon, you said you can't be bought or threatened at the, t at the town council. I like that. She, st she stood her ground. Good job. Um, oh, you said December 10th you were going to give out uh, the fingerprints. You still haven't given out the fingerprints. Sharik Ahmad bought the stamps for the racial flyers, it, it was in the newspaper. And uh, when are you gonna give us the, oh, about Sharik Ahmad, why are we paying his mom $25 an hour to work part-time? Do we just, we give everybody in the Democratic Party a hookup, or just him because he's the head of the Edison Democratic Organization? Because $25 an hour part-time, it, it seems, you don't have to give me a dirty look over there like you give a dirty look to, to your other board members all the time. This is public comments. I'm able to speak. And I mean, come on. Now, now I understand why some people get up and walk out the meeting sometimes. So um, can anyone tell me why Sharik Ahmad, the person who sent out the racial flyers, his mom gets uh, $25 an hour? Who, who okayed that, the whole board, or who okays such a salary? Neville, would you like to answer? You, you, I know you'll answer. You gonna stay quiet for this one? No? Sam Joshi, would you like to answer? How does Sharik Ahmad's mom get $25 an hour? Part-time. How much does the average employee of the library make, uh, Sam? You gonna stay silent? Everybody's gonna stay silent on this one? You know, you guys do work for the township. You are supposed to respond back. Not, not you, just to shut people likely, down at the... You most likely realize that we cannot discuss personnel issues with you. But you, you had no problem doing that when, when you fired the, the Chinese lady. We pick and choose when, when, when we can talk about personnel matters. Shannon, can you answer some questions for me at least? Oh, I think that's up to the library director or acting director to answer because it's a library employee. Ah, uh, man. I do believe that you have been speaking for more than six minutes. I, I don't believe so. He's got 36 seconds left. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ruan. God bless you. I want to shout out Esther, Maria Orchid. I love Maria Orchid. What's up, Jerry She? That dude right there. 
MC Tony D, that lady, that dude. I'm going to skip Sam Joshi because you're racist against South Edison. Have some respect for South Edison. Fox Road represent. Miss Ran, we love you. Shannon, we love you. David Yee, free David Yee. We all love you. Miss Massey, we love you. Miss Mead, we love you. I don't know you, but we love you. Miss Krause, let, right. let's be a little bit more pleasant to the That's people right. at the podium. All right, thank Ms. you. Ms. No, no, I, I can't forget Miss O'Neill. A lot of love, Miss O'Neill. And Neville, what's up, Neville? You own a smoke shop, but, but you claim to be against vape, and I just want to put that on the record. All right, thank He's you. real um, sneaky, that one. Watch, watch I, I would Neville. like to have the opportunity to respond to his public comment. Um, first, uh, I mean, as a library, we need to follow the agenda. Uh, I've been accused by the resolution in the city council that because I left the meeting, there is a, one of the agenda was not discussed. But if you look at the agenda for the last meeting, and if you look at the, watch the video, videotape of the last meeting, I left after the closed session. And based on the agenda, there is no agenda item after that one. So, I was wrongly accused by that resolution in the city council. It's so easy to check that fact. You just look at this agenda published, and you look at that videotape on the last meeting. You can get the fact. I also have a, yeah. I actually have a question for the board president. Last Friday, David received a letter in mail from the city council attorney asking for his resignation. I'm sorry, can I speak without any interruption? It's Robert Rule that I have the floor now, in case you don't know about Robert Rule. Um, anyway, and on Saturday, our board president sent an email to David the very next day after David received this letter telling him not to come to the meeting anymore. So I just have a question. At that time, Saturday, within 24 hours, as far as I don't understand, half of the councilmen, council members, doesn't even know about this. Pat, how do you know that about the content of the letter sent to David? You mind answer that? I can't answer that. I was traveling at the time. So there was a six hour difference in time. And I was informed that a letter had been sent with yeah, the you, information that you have said. And the only reason I contacted David was so that I was assuming he was going to resign as of Monday and that there would be no need for him to attend the meeting tonight. I think it's, it's a common sense that before anybody resign, he is still on that position. And this is your colleague. Um, so even if he didn't, which he, he didn't resign, so you're sending email to him not to come to the meeting. Why is that necessary? If he resigned by Monday, he wouldn't come to the meeting. So I think it's purely as a humiliation purpose. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I, I don't think, believe that. And I haven't done yet. Oh, so I, I think that's totally non-professional. And you owe David an apology. Is there any other business for this meeting? Yeah. Well, yes. <clears throat> Tony Pasquale, Two Pine Street. So I do have a question. On the last meeting um, where Mr. Yi is accused of walking out, was the meeting adjourned? Was there an official adjourning? Okay. So then if there was not, the one I was in for December when other members walked out along with Mr. Yi, it was also not adjourned. The second meeting was not adjourned, okay? If it wasn't adjourned, there is no reason for Mr. Yi to walk out of the meeting. You don't leave a meeting. Uh, can I speak, please? Okay, let me talk, and then you can talk, okay? Until a meeting is adjourned in any meeting, 
I run town halls for CEOs. They don't leave the meeting until the CEO says, thank you, I appreciate you coming. Everybody knows the meeting is over. Any official government meeting, until the person running the meeting says it is adjourned, are the members of anybody on that stage or anywhere official leaves that meeting. There is no excuse. On the agenda, it doesn't say anything. It doesn't matter. The meeting was not adjourned. The president would have had the right to say anything when you guys came back, even if it was on the agenda. So the excuse of, oh, I just didn't, there was nothing else to do in the meeting, no, that doesn't fly. Two meetings where there was no adjournment on those meetings by the president. That, you can't refute that. How do you refute that? Can, can anybody refute that? That you don't leave a meeting, an official meeting, till it is adjourned. If anybody wants to refute that, do it now, because I'd like to know Are you done? what it, yeah, I just go ahead. Make sure. Yes, can you let me know? So if you think you're part of illegal activities, do you think they should continue? What was illegal? Okay, this is the what I think. Okay, the whole debate on illegal, okay? The first meeting in December, okay? And that whole thing, I know personally, was checked out by law, law lawyers, okay? Really? Yeah, I do, I was told that, okay? okay. So really that was done. Don't, you, is this gonna argue back and forth, or no, can no, I talk? I'm I do know that, yes. Do you know yes, there's I a do lawsuit know. pending against this board because of that meeting, because of December meeting? Uh, that's is that, why is that? Tech, okay, I don't need to know that. I, but that I don't need to know all those details. Check with the board. Why do I need to know all those details? I'm, I'm, I'm on the point I'm, of... I'm not, well, always in details. I'm on the point of adjournment, okay? You said that, there, that you left because the meeting was over, you thought, because the no. agenda, there was nothing left. That's what he just said. No. Okay, you just, there was nothing on the agenda. I what I'm saying. Why did you walk out? What I'm saying is that there is no agenda. Was item, the meeting adjourned? At the end of the closed was session, the meeting adjourned? Repeating the same question. You're, you're not asking me answer my question, Mr. Yee. I answered your question. Was the meeting adjourned by the president? Because I left because there is a... Simple yes or no. no Was the meeting adjourned by the president? The answer is no. That's all I'm talking about. That's because there is <coughs> forget a the agenda then. activity inside of the closed session. This is, okay, forget the agenda. My point is to the president right. is, you know what? Forget no, the no, agenda. No, no. You no, didn't... Right? No. This, this has got to be... I'm just going to say what I said before. I'll repeat yes, it and I will walk away. Uh, you did I'm not sorry. adjourn either meeting. Nobody should have left the meeting until you adjourned it. That's the way you officially end it. Yes. I'm done. No, you're okay. absolutely right. Nobody That's not true. I think I should have the... I should have the chance. Uh, Madam President, right? uh, three can, we, can we adjourn the meeting? Because no, special meeting has to be. We're still in public comments. You yeah. can. You can first and second that motion. Uh, oh, no, I got we, my hand up. Rebuttal, three minutes. Uh, no, nope. that one is uh, about me. So no, I that, attended there's a that meeting. On the floor to adjourn the meeting. Yeah, I have, the, I have, the, I, I have the, uh, right to defend myself so again, for that no, false no, accusation. Second it. Okay. Okay. At the end of the second it. Don't second it. Pat, don't at, second with your go. Go. At, the, at, the, at the end of that closed session. All those oh. in favor of adjourning this meeting. At the no. end of that no. No. there's no. a. Now who's, a, who's walking out of the meeting now? Public comments. 